of the universe. We're wrapping things up now because we've gotten all the secrets of the universe. Now you may scoff. Oh, Scotty boy, come on. You know you can't exhaust the secrets of the universe. Today we're going to talk about imaginarity. This is a mathematical term. I have discovered that it's also a geometric term and nobody has ever known that before. I am a discoverer. <laughs> I know. Talk about imagination. Um, the reason I started presenting on YouTube was to expose the secrets of the universe that had already been discovered, which had only been discovered in the past century. Well, now it's past October 6th, 2023, which was the centennial day, officially, at least according to the NASA site. It's really hard to date a discovery exactly, and I've heard the date given all the way from 1924 through 1926 or even 1929. These would be the series of discoveries made by Edwin Powell Hubble that unlocked the universe. Now again, that's a kind of a grandiose thing to say, and we are kind of hampered with language in expressing the secrets of the universe. But if all you knew about were stars, and then you knew about galaxies, well, you certainly learned something about the universe, all right. Well, humanity has not stopped partying since. And here we need to get down to science. I love to tell stories. I like to talk off the cuff. I believe in the balance of life. I don't think that we're all supposed to be pulsing brains, just spitting out numbers like computers. But <laughs> one, one does not want to be dissipative, like, well, let's just go wherever we want then. No, this is a science channel. I am supposed to be presenting science, but today I am presenting in, in, as part of our wrap-up series, this is the synthesis stage. After 18 months, I'm attempting to synthesize all the information that you and I were able to learn together because I know all of my thousands and thousands of followers have been following along just unable to wait for the next video. <laughs> At first, I had a dozen views per video. This is back in June of 2022 because of course I told my family and friends and acquaintances oh go look at my new video <laughs> uh, yeah so this has been quite a ride but I started I would have I'm not a discoverer I'm not even a physicist <laughs> I don't really well I didn't consider myself to be a scientist in most of my life I've hated scientists and science I like nature and I like truth, and you could say that when you put those together, that's science. Well, that is how I look at it now. But science, I mean, a year and a half ago, I was just as brain dead as you are. And uh, one of the reasons I give these lectures is to get people out of the propaganda cycle. Science is not technology, kids. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm talking to myself as well. No, I consider myself to be hoi polloi. I'm just a layman. I am not. I know I wear a nice shirt. That's so I'll look nice. Normally, I look like a... I mean, not a pig, but a slob. In fact... Oh, God, I'll tell stories. No, no, I don't want to tell stories. Today, we're going to talk about imaginarity. Now, I have promised in the past couple of lectures to talk about redshift and what it actually means. <clears throat> and it's just amazing how things begin to go once you've been going long enough learning how to do something. Things just seem to synchronize themselves. I did not plan this. I do several threads, as they say in computer science, all at once, every day. I sit down in the morning and I'm writing out an outline for my latex document. I'm also learning stuff. I'm catching up on research. I'm making references for stuff I've already done, and then I make these videos. There's all kinds of stuff to do. 
even though I'm a one-man operation out in the middle of the Sonoran Desert, northern Sonoran Desert in Chico, California, I do keep active. I just turned 69. That's a magical sexual age, 69. And uh, I am quite popular with uh, both sexes now. My ass apparently just attracts the attention of uh, rather handsome homos that I've always gotten along with. I say, whatever you do with your sexual side of your life, I actually don't want to know. But if you share it with me, I'm grateful. Hey, you know, you would like to have what you call sex with me? Um, you're the wrong gender. And it doesn't seem to offend them. They're human, okay? When I say they, the homos. Plus, I mean, men have to admit, and I've done a poll, and I am a man, and I also watch a lot of movies, and homosexuality, you know, there's it goes both ways. Just like it says in the Bible, even women gave up the natural use of their equipment, and basically it's it's not a friendly message. Like, well, you're, you know, you're, you're doing... <laughs> You're off course, but that's from a religious point of view, and I don't do that to people. I may think it. I may think, well, you know, you're pretty fucking deluded. But I've learned, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. What What are my sexual proclivities? Um, when it kind, of, don't worry, it's nothing unusual, but it could be kind of banal. You know what I mean? And so, don't don't ever point the finger at other people. You'll regret it. You just will. And if you feel hateful or you just have some gripe or you want to vent or you've got an issue, don't write it, don't send emails, and don't type anything. Just, first of all, just think it. Ah, God, I hate those. God damn uh, whatever they are. Trump. You know, it's something to do with Trump. You know, nobody seems to love Trump. What's wrong with this nation? And you're just going nuts. Well, that's exactly what's happening. You're going nuts. Now, sometimes it's justified, you know. You're surrounded by a gang, and they're taking turns, you know, whipping you and hitting you with bottles, and, and you're just innocent, you haven't done a thing, you don't know what's going on. Well, then you might get upset and kill them all, you know, with karate kicks. That's okay. But that's not the normal side of life. you got to try to stay balanced. And if things are ticking you off, well, don't go there anymore. If it's your family, well... Don't curse your parents, but I don't know what else to tell you. And so when it comes to sexual proclivities, I don't care. I never did. Mostly I just try to understand, like, what? Well, when I first heard about it, first, I wasn't alone either. We didn't believe it. It's like, first of all, we weren't even sure about a boy and a girl. Oh, we weren't even sure about that. It's like, what? No, you, the girls play over on that side of the playground. We play o mostly. And then when we mix, we're fine, but we're not looking at each other's ass. Not, not in junior high, although by then some were. <laughs> and you start hearing things, and then you start hearing rumors. Well, you know, a boy might actually, you know. <sighs> but if you don't even have anything to compare it with, what, what again? A boy might what? Like, um... With a boy or a girl, it, you're out of your mind. You don't take off your clothes for just anybody, okay? So, the point being is that we're all in this together. We're all basically the same. Now, imaginarity, <laughs> as I was saying, is a science topic. The way I, I can definitely make science out of it, I deal with imaginarity every day because I'm a discoverer now and this is very unusual and I can say this objectively but you might not credit this because you haven't been following my lectures because I know you you've you've watched maybe one like most likely this is the first of my lectures you're watching 350 um every time I make a lecture I like today it's like well, 350 of them are down the drain. They're sitting there. Anybody could look them up and watch them. They have provocative titles. And my most popular, I'm getting to the subject of imaginarity, don't worry. 
But this all ties in. What I was going to say is, as I was <laughs> preparing my video today on imaginarity, I realized that the topic of imaginarity is the perfect seg. I looked it up. S-E-G-U-E -E is not pronounced segway. I couldn't believe it when I heard these people like, what did you say, seg? Yeah, you mean S-E-G-U-E? -E? It's never that easy, though, but I'm shortening the story. It's pronounced seg. You know why? Because I say so. Segway? N no. You show me another word in any language, or English in this case, but adapted from other languages, ends in E-G-U-E, -E, and you're going to say that that's gway. No. There is no other And so, no. It's seg. Like C-H-E-Q-U-E -E is... Well, what's that? Chewe. Chewe? Bring me the Chewe? No. So it's seg. Anyway, I told you. I'm in an expansive mood, and I don't mind doing this. And yes, I will run off to four different levels before I come back. There are men who make regular presentations right here on YouTube who don't tell you any science at all. There's a guy named... <laughs> they just talk to you because they think they are wise or they're philosophical or they're lonely. Like if they live in remote Tennessee or Kentucky. I'm trying to think of the guy's name. <laughs> I like this guy. I watch him. I don't watch him much anymore, but... But I've forgotten his name, forgive me, but he's a magnetist. And ever since day one, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard this term, a magnetist, like in the Middle Ages, pretty close to a warlock, a witch, just some alchemist, just <laughs> dealing with stuff that's remarkably close to deviltry, you know, making chemicals fizz and, you know, floating around in the, in the night. That's where we get lunatic from, by the way. It's from people who like the moon. Although that's not quite fair, then that's not quite true. But I'm in an expansive mood. I'm still trying to remember the guy's name. Oh, shit. I, anyway, he doesn't present science, although he thinks he does. Nobody can understand anything he says. He's bald and he has all of these crazy tattoos. The hell can't I remember his name? I love this guy, but... He's weirder than shit, but he, he's right on. And I, I listen to people who say stuff that's right on. Now, seven out of ten of the things that he says are not right on for whatever reason. Either you can't understand what the guy is saying because he's extraordinarily educated. I've never met anyone. I have the reputation of being a brainiac, which is ridiculous, but it's easy in America to get that label. Because most people, they just want entertainment. Americans, we're very fun-loving. <laughs> I'm not saying the rest of the world is like <laughs> stick in the muds, wallflowers, but Americans, I'll just say, I like Americans. I am an American, I'm sure you've noticed. <laughs> so I have about five threads going right now. So imaginarity. The hell is his name? Oh, it's right out of it. Okay, you know what? I'm sorry, but I have to do this. You're not going to see this, but I'm looking up the guy's name. If I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> uh, he has a book on magnetism, but the point is what I do is quite similar today. I mean, typically I don't do what he does because me lecturing to people on wisdom... Um, <laughs> Not in America, no. you got to understand something about America. Um, the All the stereotypes are true, but we're just like any other country. We're a mix. There are holy people, even in America. I've met a couple, I'm sure of it. Of course, you never know. 
But holy people, and of course, mountebanks, just the craziest mountebanks, especially here in California, and particularly in Southern California, which thank God I'm not in, I'm in Northern California, but California, do 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 we will believe anything. Now, I don't want to snow you with um, philosophy and religion, but I am a philosopher, and I am into religion. I was a Bible scholar for 30 years. I know. I, the world is so full of a number of things. And people, you don't know. You look and you're like, this guy? What? He's not anything. Well, I agree. But, actually, no. you got to probe beneath the surface. You don't know what that person is until you get to know them. Well, I'm out on YouTube, still trying to remember that guy's name. It's going to pop into my mind. Don't you love it? You can't remember, oh God, what's that actor's name? What's that movie? What's that city? What's that battle in some war? Is it, God, you've written papers on it. You know, you've given dissertations on it. You're the one of the pros of the world on it, and now you can't remember the fucker's name. Oh, the leader of Germany, you know. Oh, God. It begins with an A. You just can't get it. You keep thinking, Goebbels, Goebbels. No, it's not Goebbels. <laughs> oh, it's hot here in Chico, even though it's technically the second half of October now. This is a Saturday, October 20. Well, now it's the 22nd since it's 3 a.m. <laughs> it was UFC 294, and I watched it because I love to see men just kicking the sh yet out of each other's heads and everything else. I'm not a violent man, and I've only been in like, well, two or three fights, depending on what you call a fight. One of them was major, and I won. I've won all my fights, but I don't think that's something to brag about. First of all, I have no martial arts experiences. Well, actually, the first fight that I was in, which I won, was it, uh, the only reason I, I won it. The, the guy got in an uppercut. Should have been the end of the fight for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I have a, what do they call a granite jaw. But I didn't even feel it. I didn't even have a bruise. The guy looked at me, and then I just, I had been trained in boxing. At the age of 13, I, <laughs> my dad sent me to this place. Where they, they taught me how to break a guy's arm, a guy's leg. They, didn't, they were Navy SEALs, father and son theme. The divines of all the crazy names for Navy SEALs. They, they taught us how to box. Let me tell you something about the martial arts. Fuck the martial arts. And I'll tell you why. We found out on day one. I don't think anybody in that class went into martial arts. Because these guys actually could do it. They could kill you with anything. <laughs> and... And so they just here put on the 10 ounce gloves, boxing gloves. And here's our first lesson hold them out in front of you. Just hold those goddamn things out in front of you. You're not boxing, you're not dancing, you're not jabbing, you're not doing anything. Just stand there with those mother. <laughs> they didn't teach us how to swear, but we would learn that too. Holding these things out after 60 seconds or whatever. It wasn't very long, and we're all like, and he's like, yeah. Yeah, imagine holding those things out in front of you <laughs> while dancing and jabbing and being hit. And I, 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 I felt it. It wasn't just me. It was like, fuck that, man. And plus, when you're in a fight, um, you're, you're not, you know, <laughs> you're not Superman just always kicking the ass of whoever Superman's kicking the ass of. You're going to get your ass kicked too. And I uh, am pretty sure I, I could not take a punch. Well, in this fight, I did take a punch. And I swear, I don't know. I knew the crowd, there were like 30 kids watching this fight in the hall. The kid just picked the fight with me just because, I don't know. We actually sat pretty close to each other in math class. And afterwards, we continued to sit and we... We acknowledged each other as like, yeah, you know, we had a fight and now we're okay again. I guess he had to do it. He was pressure. He was a 
smaller kid. He shouldn't have been fighting at all. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, he was there, he's like, we're gonna fight, and I'm like, what? And then, okay, but I don't want to, but then there's this crowd of kids forming. <laughs> So, you know, I square up and I'm like, I don't even, I'm not even sure what I'm doing here. I just hold my hands up like, you know, the divines taught me how to do, but <laughs> it's just my fist now. <laughs> and, um, you know, he squares up and suddenly he's gone and then boom, oh, he just came right underneath with an uppercut. That should have been the end of the fight. But I actually didn't feel it. I didn't, I, I knew what happened. My head bounced back to my frickin' third vertebrae. And I'm, I'm still standing there, wow, and I'm wondering how come I'm not unconscious. And he's looking at me, he's got his fists up, and he's not sure why I'm not down on the ground either. So ever since then, I thought maybe there's an angel that, like, follows me around. Well, you don't want to count on that, okay? <laughs> I never did, but I just, I just... When you, when you snap a jab, you do it in a certain way. It doesn't take a lot of effort, but you have to, I'll, I'll do it. It's coming right at your face. Here's my left jab, and you snap it. You saw how it turned 90 degrees? At the very end, you snap it. So I'd learned how to do this, and we snapped it into each other's faces with Clyde Divine watching us. We loved this guy. He was actually a swimming and diving school is what it was called. But uh, that was only like... 20 minutes out of the hour. Oh, the dads who sent their kids to this swimming and diving school? Well, I learned how to swim, and I learned how to dive like a ballerina dolphin. But, you know, for the other 40 minutes to teach, you know, now, how to, how to fight. We did trampolining, we did judo, jiu-jitsu, how to break a guy's leg, a guy's arm, you know, where to hit the person to uh, break their liver, cr crush their heart. The solar plexus is the best place. So now you can hit a guy in the face that's just going to make him mad and want to hit you in the face. But if you hit him in the solar plexus, he'll want to go home and play with his goldie fish. So then he had us standing there, you know, with our 10-ounce gloves. Now pair up and I want you to hit, now not hard, really softly. And he showed very softly, solar plexus. I wanted to die. And the other guy, I had to do it to him. He looked like hell. And you hear all around you, oh, just tap. Not even hard. Solar plexus. It's right at the base of the sternum. If you hit someone there, they're going to be able to just literally just go around behind them and kick their ass. Because they're not going to be able to respond after that for a long time because they're, oh, well, that's not what happened in this fight. So he hits me with an uppercut. Nothing happened. Nobody understood. It was like a dream. And then I snapped the jab, left jab, right into his nose. And it didn't break it. I didn't feel that it did anything. He dropped his arms, and he rushed through the crowd to get away. Now, all these kids are quite disappointed, as you can imagine. So they jumped on me and pummed no, no, it's and that was it. It was like nothing even happened. So I, I'm not a warrior, okay? But I did watch UFC 294 today. <laughs> Which is mixed martial arts. So those guys who get naked, basically, is really sexual. I did wrestling, and at the time you don't know that you're pressing your whole body against the whole body of another man, boy. And getting sweaty and rolling around, you know, mixing your legs together, just rubbing your genitals together. You have the mount position. It's, God, it's just pure homo. Um, no, I, I, it's not. I don't know how to explain it, but it's actually normal. But when you watch it, you, I mean, you can't help. They're kissing. It looks like they're, it looks like they're fucking. When, when they're doing the sambo, it's like, I can't watch it after a while. They're down there. You guys try to pound his face. But really, they're making love. And actually, when the fight is over, I know, this isn't too much about imaginarity, is it? I may, I may not want to publish this. But I'm in a mood. I like to tell stories. And imaginarity 
as I began to say, the perfect seg, the perfect seg into redshift, what it actually is, the universe is not expanding, okay? If you learn nothing else from moi, just be sure to take this away. We're not descended from monkeys. That's my main beef. And the other one is the universe is not expanding. Okay? And I've already shown you several times why we're not descended from monkeys. And the whole, it's not even a real theory. Darwin literally did not know what the fuck he was talking about. So you may challenge, and of course I have been challenged. I've been doing this since I was 16. I knew that natural selection was wrong as soon as I heard about it. It's like, what? That's insane! And I didn't even believe in God at the time. I knew nothing about God. It wasn't a religious argument. It was just... What are you, out of your fucking mind? Things don't change into each other. Well, you know what the evidence is that convinces everybody? Is when you dig up the fossils from the layers, which, never mind, but the layers from whatever waters covered the earth at the time, and you dig up the fossils, the big ones are on top. And as you dig down, which is going back in time, there's no way around that, they get smaller and smaller. And they also change. And some of them die out, but they all change. And so, so they're saying, well, Darwin was right. Um, no, he wasn't right. But there is an interesting point there. And why do I say that? Because Watson and Crick, in the... 1970s discovered DNA structure. Now we know everything about DNA, the double strand, RNA, polymerase, ACGT. We, we, we got it all. We know the code. Fuck, we're trying to break the code. Haven't done it yet. But how do species change into each other with time? Well, it's real easy to brainwash an American audience. And, and we're talking about all the way up to Ph.D. level, brainiacs, far beyond my intelligence or training level. Just totally, they just go daffy. They just go, oh, well now I don't have to think about it at all. All I have to do is say evolution, millions of years, and if I want to write a Ph.D. thesis about it, Group pressure and slow evolution. But as for the mechanism, science, how does it happen? Does it ever happen? No, it can't happen. The computers even say so. They're like, what? You're asking me if a chimpanzee can mutate into a human? No. That's what the computers say. Because mutations never help. So you tell me. But you see what the problem with that is, <laughs> is if it's not <laughs> mutation, which it's obviously not, then what is it? It's aliens, and that's like, oh, God, no. I mean, it, 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 you're, jumping, <laughs> you're jumping from the, how do they say, from the frying pan into the fire? I really don't like analogies like that, okay? Metaphors that have to do with fire. I live in Northern California. I'm a survivor of the campfire. I'm dying right now by giving you this lecture because my lungs are so fucking shot. As soon as I'm done with this lecture, I'm just going to cough myself blind. I'm going to retch. I'm going to need three kinds of medicine. But I do this for you kids because I love you. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> And that was the hog sound, which is very good luck. If your professor makes the hog sound while he's laughing hysterically and trying to drown his sorrows with, uh, yeah, old Chico, old Chico, Sierra Nevada crystal wheat medicine water. Mm -mm -mm. Very good for you if you're dying at 3 a.m. 
after watching the UFC fights, I'm still pumped up. That's where you're going to get the good stuff. Imaginarity, here we go. Except that's a half an hour. So we'll be back in the next lecture. I swore it, no, not past a half an hour, because you Americans have the attention span of a mayfly. Okay, I'll be right back.